Ruben Gallego, Democrat from Arizona, who is a Marine Corps combat veteran, unlike you bloated fuckers who run around with your guns and your your imitation military uniforms and you're going to show up at that NRA convention, Gallegos would drop a whole goddamn room of you without batting an eye because you're so disgusting, so despicable. But Gallego tweeted, tweeted this, Fuck you, NRA. Before replying to this vicious little Christian fuck Ted Cruz's claim that, quote, inevitably, when there's a murderer of this kind, you see politicians try to politicize it. You see Democrats and lots of folks in the media whose immediate solution is to try to restrict the constitutional right of law abiding citizens. That's what this scummy son of a bitch, Cruz, tweeted. Gallegos told him, tweeted to him, fuck you, Ted Cruz, you care about a fetus, but you will let our children get slaughtered. Just get your ass to Cancun, you are useless. And then in a second tweet, Gallego wrote, just to be clear, fuck you, Ted Cruz, you fucking baby killer. And finally, he responded to the fascist Christian representative, Daryl Issa. Yeah, he's still around. Jesus Christ. Issa offered thoughts and prayers. And Gallegos responded, fuck your prayers. Good on you, Gallego. He wrote, fuck your prayers. They haven't worked for the last 20 mass shootings. How about passing laws that will stop these killings? End quote, Ruben Gallego. Yeah, you can tell Gallego is uh, furious, as I am, as you probably are. Why are we in a position where 85% of the American public says this shit's got to stop, pass the laws, make it stop? And we can't get the laws passed because of these fucking Christians, these rotten, Christ-killing Christians in the House and the Senate. How do, how do they go to their, their, I don't care if they're Catholic or Protestant, how do they go to their churches and pray to this imaginary fuckhead that they've invented and then do this shit? How do they do it? I, I, I can't, that's what I can't get my mind around. These people are so delusional, so caught up in this religious bullshittery. It's just unreal. And they think their God and their Messiah has no problem with this. Oh, well, God must have decided to call the children home. You filthy sons of bitches. Steve Kerr, coach of the Golden State Warriors. Did you see that? He uh, He made a statement before the Warriors played the Dallas Mavericks. Game four, NBA basketball playoffs yesterday. Well, the Western Conference Finals in Dallas. Kerr happens to be one of the leading voices in the NBA on social issues. Yeah. And he gave another emotional plea for gun control. After 21 people murdered in Texas on Tuesday at an elementary school. Coach Kerr said he was, quote, fed up after this latest mass shooting. And bless his heart, Kerr took aim at the politicians who refused to pass a bipartisan law that the House passed two years ago that would make background checks mandatory for every gun sale. And it's been sitting in the Senate under the filthy ass of Mitch McConnell, who will not let it come up for a vote during the past two years. And this year, when he's no longer the Senate Majority Leader, 
He still lets Schumer know, don't even fucking try to bring it up because you're not going to get the votes you need. Now, the news was devastating to Kerr because the coach, because his own father was shot dead. He was a university professor and the president of the American University of Beirut. And he was shot dead outside his office in Lebanon, January 18th, 1984. When Steve Kerr was 18, ironically, ironically, this was a week before I went to work for CNN. And the story I was assigned to cover was the so-called civil war that was going on in Lebanon at the time. I didn't know that about Steve Kerr's dad when I read that the Associated Press. I remember that. The bureau chief for CNN had been kidnapped. People had been shot dead, Americans. Different story altogether. But this is what Steve Kerr said. Quote, I'm not going to talk about basketball. Nothing's happened with our team in the last six hours. We're going to start the same way tonight. Any basketball questions don't matter. Fourteen, I'm sorry, 19 children were killed 400 miles from here and two teachers. In the last 10 days, We've had elderly black people killed in a supermarket in Buffalo. We've had Asian churchgoers killed in Southern California. Now we have children murdered at school. When are we going to do something? I'm tired. I'm so tired of getting up here and offering condolences to the devastated families that are out there. I'm so tired. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm tired of the moments of silence. Enough. There are 50 senators right now who refuse to vote on H.R. 8, which is a background check rule that the House passed a couple of years ago. It's been sitting there for two years. There's a reason they won't vote on it. They want to hold on to power. I ask you, Mitch McConnell, all of you senators who refuse to do anything about the violence, the school shootings, the supermarket shootings, I ask you, are you going to put your own desire for power ahead of the lives of our children and our elderly and our churchgoers? Because that's what it looks like. That's what we do every week. So I'm fed up. I've had enough. We're going to play the game tonight. But I want every person here, every person listening to this, to think about your own child or grandchild, your mother or father, sister, brother. How would it feel if this happened to you today? We can't get numb to this. We can't sit here and just read about it and go, well, let's have a moment of silence. Go, Dubs. Come on, Mavs. Let's go. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go play a basketball game. 50 senators in Washington are going to hold us hostages. Do you realize that 90% of Americans, regardless of political party, want background checks, universal background checks? 90% of us. We're being held hostage by 50 senators in Washington who refuse to even put it to a vote despite what we, the American people, want. They won't vote on it because they want to hold on to their own power. It's pathetic. I've had enough. End quote. Steve Kerr, coach of the Golden State Warriors. Well, like I said half an hour ago, I... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm totally out of comments, words. Anything I would say about this tragedy yesterday is pointless, redundant, useless, worthless. 
has no meaning, no bearing, because of, well, what Steve Kerr said, there are 50 cowardly white son of a bitches, excuse me, 49 cowardly white son of a bitches and one black son of a bitch, the 50 black Republican senators who squat in the U.S. Senate building and will do nothing to stop this. And we have a couple Democrats also, right? A couple Democrats who will do nothing. You know who they are, and it's more than two. So to, to talk, and, and, and yet, even though I, I, I can't put coherent sentences together about this, I can't do it. I just can't do it. What, what else, I mean, any other topic that I would bring up on this podcast today or tomorrow or next week in light of what happened in Uvalde, Texas yesterday, what happened at Sandy Hook 10 years ago, what happened last week at the top supermarket in Buffalo renders anything I have to say as just being gibberish, meaningless. But I can't just ignore the fact that Progressive Voices and iTunes has carved out an hour that I'm supposed to fill. So, what, uh, what Conway said yesterday regarding this filthy bastard Trump's suggestion that there should be another civil war while he squats down there at Wolf's Lair in Mar-a-Lago. Conway said this, quote, the suggestion is from Trump that somehow we are headed towards civil war or there should be civil war. And for a former president of the United States and leading contender for the 2024 Republican nomination to even be talking about that and suggesting that is absolutely appalling. End quote. Well, Mr. Conway, language fails. I mean, appalling? Yeah, well, I guess. But what Trump is proposing, what he has been proposing, is bloody murder, violence. The same thing that the putrid, dead, rotting Rush Limbaugh suggested for 35 fucking years. What every pig on, on, on the Fox sewer has been suggesting for as long as they've been flapping their goddamn lips Murder, mayhem, death, death to people of color, death to everybody who's not a Christian. Every single right wing talk show host in this country on radio and television has been advocating violence, violence, death, destruction for the past 35 years on and on without let up. And then people want to say, well, why did this 18 year old or that 18 year old or that 25 year old pick up a gun and go kill people? Are you fucking kidding me? We live in a culture, in a society where the advocacy for violence and death and destruction against everybody except white Christians is ongoing. It's continuous. It won't stop until we make it stop. Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. 
visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com and never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.